Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. So one of the things that we had a lot of fun with whilst uh, writing the book was um, looking at AlphaZero's middle game strategies and then trying to find um, similar strategies um, from examples from games from great players. We're going to look at some daring king marches, first by Tigran Petrosian and then by Keith Arkell. And then we're going to see how AlphaZero executes similar strategies from its games against Stockfish. So I hope that's got your attention. Let's dive into the games. So I'd like to uh, introduce uh, this theme of King Marches by looking at uh, um, actually the game that, uh, that really, that I learned this theme from. Um, it's quite an old game. It's between uh, Petrojan and Unziker, very strong German grandmaster. And um, we see the position here after Black's 28th move. It looks like White's got a really clear advantage here, um, both the rooks on the open file, and it's definitely White that's pressing. What they say is you need to have two weaknesses to work against in order to convert that advantage. So how do you make progress from here? And one thing that might occur to you is to uh, put some pressure on the king's side. But if you do that and push all the pawns forward to try and create another weakness, then you might end up exposing your own king. Yeah, that's right. That's um, uh, so... Yeah, I mean, White could try and um, and make something of this control of the sea file and the attack against the pawn, but it, as you said, it's a very narrow channel to um, uh, to uh, to attack on. And um, well, I mean, the advantage of having much better placed pieces is that they have a lot more mobility, so they can act on both sides of the board. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, um, you could try and open something on the king side, but that king on g one is um, will be rather weak if you advance all the pawns. But Petrojan sort of spots, um, and this is something that Alpha Zero actually does very well as well, he understands always perfectly when his opponent can do nothing and when he's got time to improve his position. And what Petrojan comes up with here is this beautiful idea, um, King F1, pushing the pawn first of all, of under that umbrella of the, uh, of the major pieces on the C file, just to transfer the king over to the king side, to the queen side rather. And once the king is on the queen side, the king's beautifully safe on there. But that means that you can advance the pawns without exposing your own king. And obviously black can't do a similar thing and bring his king over to the queen side because there's just no cover there at all for black. No, that would be uh, that would be a, a pretty advanced form of uh, of, uh, <laughs> of digging your own grave, I think, if you if you brought the king over to the queen side. So um, what we see here. Another typical Petrojan move, rook c1, playing around a little bit, f4 in total control, and then Petrojan went for g4. Um, and he's simply going to play h5, and then afterwards the rook can come to the king's side and, uh, and actually mate on the king's side. So Unziker did his very best. Uh, again, a lovely move from uh, from Petrojan there, just getting the, the king out of the way of any checks along the b1h7 diagonal. Um, h takes g6, queen h4, attacking that rook on d8, bishop b7, queen f2, and uh, big threat here. Mm, rook g1 is threatened. Exactly. I mean, you've... It's um, really uh, dangerous. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you've uh, you've still got your control of the c-file, but you've just opened lines on the uh, on the king side as well. And you look at the black pieces, that rook on a7, tied down to the queen side. It can't get over to the king side. So king f8, knight d2. Knight b3, Petrozar, an expert at just uh, playing around, bishop f6, rook c8. And uh, the queen's on the king's side, and now the invasion is happening on the on the queen's side all of a sudden. Rook d7, knight c5, a gorgeous little move. If uh, rook takes c8, then knight takes d7 check, wins the rook. Uh, b3 check, a bit of desperation there from, uh, from uh, Unziker. King b3, rook d6, f5. Glorious move. Um, a push on the king side, um, but uh, actually uh, the queen is now going to invade on the queen side, and um, uh, and uh, Untuk had, uh, had seen enough here. Um, something like queen f5, um, I could even play knight d7 check, picking up the rook on b6. 
So a really gorgeous exposition of this um, of this idea, simply that um, um, we'll just go all the way back. So many moves have been played, but uh, but actually, you know, Black has been able to do so little in that time. Mm. It's quite striking. Just um, complete control of the position. Um, you don't try and just win everything on a narrow channel. You try and open another side of the board. And to do that, you first make sure that your own king is safe, just making sure of your complete control of the position. Mm. It's a sort of very clear and easy strategy, really, to play because you put your king safe and then you can attack how you feel like. Exactly, exactly. It's um, a gorgeous idea. It's the first time I saw this theme and, uh, well, it's just stayed in my mind ever since. Patrician's King March reminded us strongly of a game played by English maestro Grandmaster Keith Arkell, where he did a king march in a similar type of position. This game was featured in our book Chess for Life. Yeah, and it was um, a very, very nice game. It's a, a real shame that Keith didn't manage to to bring this to a victorious conclusion. Otherwise, I think it would have been uh, his immortal game. It was a beautiful, beautiful strategy. But you can see very, very, uh, very big parallels to, uh, to how Petrachan played. So, um, as well here, Keith wants to advance the kingside pawns um, and create some uh, some entry channels on the kingside. But his king's in the way. So, what does he do? He brings the king into play. On the queen side, makes a little path for it, and the king goes to b3. Actually, the king here also has a very useful purpose. It's protecting the pawn on b4, which is also freeing a white piece for action elsewhere. As you can see, black can only wait, and uh, now Keith starts taking action on the uh, on the king side. I like this move h3. He could have played h4 immediately, but no, he played h3. Uh, queen d1. There's no rush. G4. Queen f3 again, and now h4. And Keith chooses to play the pawn to g5 uh, here. And the nice point about this is that once this f6 pawn goes, then white's knight on d3, uh, a very typical thing that uh, Keith always does in these structures, now has access to the e5 square. Um, so the game uh, continued. Keith uh, just uh, gradually improving his position. King goes out of the way, out of the way of any annoying checks. Black still doesn't seem to have really very active plans to be able to break free of White's grip here. No, I mean, White's got a got a total grip here. Um, and this was a, a little bit of a, of a shame, really. Uh, just at this moment, and there are a number of other moments uh, later on, Keith could have played a, a move like uh, E3 to E4, um, just uh, breaking and threatening F5 and then G6. It would have been completely killing. Mm, it really. D5 pinned. Exactly. So uh, it would have been uh, would have been completely winning. Um, unfortunately, I think he must have been getting short of time or whatever. He didn't quite find the uh, the way to push the game through, and uh, eventually he uh, just uh, he just allowed a perpetual at the uh, at the end of the game. It's a real shame, but the strategy itself was fantastic. You know, just like Petrojan, bring the king. Uh, over to the queen side and then push the king side pawns and uh, and you know launch a decisive attack against the opponent's king. So so far we've seen uh, two great king marches uh, to the other side of the board in order to allow a pawn advance uh, from uh, Tigran Petrojan and from Keith Arkell. Um, and now we're going to see what uh, what Alpha Zero made of uh, of the same theme. Um, so we. This is a position that it reached against uh, Stockfish. Uh, Alpha Zero is black. And uh, in this position, Alpha Zero decided that um, well, its best chance of, uh, of uh, creating play and uh, gaining space was on the king's side with uh, a pawn push in actual fact. Um, H6 and then G5. However, Alpha Zero also realized that, um, that its king on H8 would be exposed if it went G5. So uh, it decided to put it to safety, and it did so in a you know a rather gorgeous way. In actual fact, um, it went uh, king g8, b4, and king to f7. And after rook f1, it went rook g8. 
So it's uh, it's uh, kind of uh, yeah swapped round. It's uh, it's uh, it's rook and king, and that king is uh, is uh, is just out of the way of the uh, of the uh, of the h file, and it's ready now to uh, to push with g five. I wonder where that king's going because when we looked at the games of Petrosian and Keith Arkell, it went right over to the queen's side, right over to the a file. I think kings Keith went as far as. But here I'm just wondering if there'll be a pawn push. If the king goes right over to c8, b8, then white might counterplay with a4, b5. Yeah, that's right. I mean, um, um, the, the queen side is not the uh, the uh, the absolute safest spot for the for the king. There's another spot that's uh, that's even safer. But I think uh, it's it's not easy to guess. Um, so Stockfish played uh, played knight e1. It's just redeploying its knight and. Um, uh, Alpha Zero played G5 straight away. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit risky, but it's, uh, it's all right. Knight D3 and then G4. So, uh, it's gained its space on the, uh, on the king side and it's also blocked up the, uh, uh, the king side. But it still wants to gain extra space with uh, H5 to H4, maybe G3 or H3. Um, Stockfish plays knight c5, b takes c5, opening that b file. So um, it's kind of dissuading the um, uh, the black king from moving there. We've got another position with queen and knight against queen and bishop. So alpha zero has got the queen and knight and wants to push on the king's side. That's right. Yeah, I mean, in this position, this knight is uh, is an excellent piece on d5, whereas the uh, the white bishop has got some problems. Uh, well, actually finding any scope at all. Um, so alpha zero went h5. Queen e7, just taking control of that dark square, and King e6. This was the uh, the safe spot for the uh, for the black king. Um, so none of these pawn, white pawns will be advancing in any kind of a hurry. No, that's it's right. And um, and this very you know, there's no knight or anything that could uh, or light squared bishop to attack that king on e6. That king is perfectly safe. Um, for all that, however, um, it's not easy to um, for black to uh, to force a breakthrough. Um, Obviously, these two pawns are opposing each other. If uh, um, and um, on the on the queen side, uh, yeah, it's not easy to uh, to do anything. Um, actually, uh, Alpha Zero chose quite a an, an interesting little strategy here. I think we can just uh, have a quick look through it. Um, Stockfish could have played G three in this position just to uh, to try and keep things completely uh, blocked. But um, yeah, I mean, Stockfish also believes in its position. It doesn't doesn't. Uh, it's not afraid. It thinks that it can maybe do something on the king side as well. Um, so the game carries on with a uh, quite a bit of manoeuvring. Um, both sides are uh, really expecting some sort of balance. But what um, Alpha Zero keeps on doing, it keeps on tempting Stockfish to take that pawn on b7. Mm. Because um, the idea is, well, if you take some of my queenside pawns, that'll open up lines for my pieces to invade. And um, it's um, a uh, um, it's a theme that you see very often with Alpha Zero that it gives away pawns um, just in order to be able to get um, uh, invasion squares for its uh, for its major pieces. And the game goes on and on and on and on as only computer chess can. And here, this is the the key moment. So uh, here, Stockfish says, "Well, okay, that pawn's been hanging for ages. I'm going to grab it." And the interesting thing there is that, um, well, it does win a pawn, but here now Alpha Zero has the A and the B files to attack with its rook, and this is actually very, very dangerous. This has not been a good, uh, a good exchange for uh, for Stockfish, and all of a sudden uh, there's quite a lot of trouble for um, uh, for Stockfish to hold this position. But Stockfish, being Stockfish and being the excellent defender that it is, it manages to hold this in, uh, you know, in. Uh, 120 or 30 moves or something like this. Will we see all of those moves, Matthew? We will not see all of those moves. Um, but, um, but I think the, the strategy here was, uh, was quite clear and very nice. You know, just, uh, put the king to safety and this time not to the queen side. Alpha Zero giving it a little twist, putting its king to safety in the center so they could advance in the, on the king side. 